Hello! I wanted to do a second video on how to pickle beets. I just harvested beets in the garden this morning and um, most of my beets are about this size, uh, the ones that I pulled. I do have some that are smaller. I'm going to let them continue to grow. But most of my beets are going to be about this size. Now I do have one that's huge, um, which I will have to cook longer. I, what I did was I sprayed them off outside and then I cut the tops. Um, to about that tall, cut the little tail end off, and I'm going, I scrubbed them in the sink, soaked them in some vinegar water, scrubbed them with a vegetable brush, got them pretty clean. Now I'm going to um, boil those on the stove until they're very firm, but I can still stick a knife through them. So that's going to be the next step in our um, canning process. We're going to hot water can the beets, and they will be pickled beets, which is my favorite. My great grandma used to pickle beets when I was a kid like really little kid and she made me my own jar um that's how much i like them ever since i was a little kid so i love pickled beets and the ones that you buy a lot of times have um high fructose corn syrup in them i didn't know that for a long time so i try to stay away from that so we're going to pickle them and make them healthier uh, so we're going to put these on to boil and we'll, I'll be right back, but we're going to check them, and uh, some of them will come out. When they come out, we're going to plunge them into ice water. So it will stop the cooking process so they won't continue to cook from the heat and then be mushy in the end. So, All right, I'm going to put these on to boil. All right, so while our beets are cooking, we're going to go ahead and get our uh, brine together that we're going to use on them, and because I like to let it set. What I have in this bowl is two cinnamon sticks. You can substitute and use ground cinnamon. You would need a tablespoon of that. I will remove these before putting it in the jar. I have a teaspoon of allspice, a teaspoon of cloves, and uh, of the whole cloves, and then I have a teaspoon of ground cloves in there. So we're going to put that in our pan. And we're going to add two cups of water. Two cups of sugar and two cups of vinegar. I used half white and half regular apple cider vinegar, but you can use whichever you like. Um, it doesn't really matter, but we're going to add that to there and we're going to simmer this very slowly um, to be sure all the sugar is dissolved and it gives the spices a chance to get mixed throughout. So we're going to simmer that slowly while our beets are cooking. All right, so I have peeled my beets. Um, I was actually going to stop and show you how I did that. Um, but the skins just slip off of them so easily. Let me get these out of the way. I have cut them up in bite-sized pieces and put them in my jars. I ended up with 10 jars. I did have, um, I had some golden beets mixed in here. It doesn't matter. Uh, you can mix them. It just might, they might be a lighter color when they get done, uh, but I did mix them with the red, so we'll see how well that comes out. Now, I'm going to add my brine to this. Um, I overcooked my beets, well, I didn't overcook them, but I cooked them longer than I prefer to. So they're a little bit softer. They'll still taste delicious. I got busy around here and uh, didn't pay attention to what I was doing, so... I've got my brine here. It's been sitting here with the cinnamon and cloves and everything in it. So now we're going to spoon that into our jars. And I'm going to try to mix it evenly throughout the jars. I will remove the cinnamon sticks. Um, we don't want to put those in the jars. But everything else we'll just stir and dip in so we can get cloves in each jar. I'm going to do a little bit in each one and then I'll come back and fill them. That way if, if you do a little bit and you uh, have to add some later if you have to make more because you're short-handed then your spices have still gotten distributed throughout all of your jars. This was supposed to do 40 beets but I don't think that it's going to. Uh, so I may end up having to mix up some more. We'll see, but that's fine. It's not a big deal if you do have to. This smells really good. 
smells like beets in here. Okay, each of my jars have some of the brine in them, but, uh, and maybe it's because I simmered it a little bit and got some of the, uh, you know, it, it uh, evaporated out. But I'm going to mix up just a little bit more and I'll be back. All right, I whipped up a little bit more brine. Um, it didn't get to simmer as long as the other, but that's okay, because that's why I went ahead and distributed um, the other first throughout each jar. We're going to fill up to the top of the shoulder, which will be up to about right here on the jar. And we should have plenty for that. I went ahead, I did add spices to it. I actually did, um, instead of the two cups of brine, I went ahead and just did one cup of sugar, one cup of uh, vinegar, one cup of water and then just a little bit of seasoning in there and we're going to add this up to the top on each one just not to the top but to the top of the shoulder and we've got to have good head space for them to seal properly now i want you to know i didn't tell you this but these jars were actually sterilized beforehand so if we were doing pressure canning you would not have to do that but we're not doing pressure canning, we're doing hot water canning, so it is very important to be sure that your jars are sterile. Now I have my lids in a pan, they're hot, and my rings, I've got those ready to go. And I've been working on that while my beets were cooking, so um, that's all important. But anytime that you hot water can, you want to be sure, oops, um, I'm going to pour the last little bit of this in here, and that should work out exactly perfectly. Um, anytime you hot water can, you want to have everything sterile because you're not going to have it in there uh, long enough to get, you know, to kill all the germs and bacteria inside. So we want to be sure everything's sterile. So, all right, let's. Uh, we're going to wipe off the tops. The reason that you want to wipe the top of the jars is in case you got anything on there you don't want it to break your seal now all the brine that I put in here was boiling hot when I put it in here so we're going to consider this to be a hot jar um, and I have my pan of water over here on the stove that uh, I'm going to put a uh, hot water bath it in there is a rack in the bottom be sure that you always put a rack you cannot set your jars directly on the bottom of a pan and let me be sure all these are clean before I put my tops on. Be sure that you don't have any nicks on your jar that would keep them from sealing. I kind of like to always double check that when I'm wiping the jars off around the top. I like to get them really clean. These are beautiful and the juice turned out really red so um, even though I had some golden beets in there it looks like they're going to be turn out red in the end, it's pretty red. Okay, these are hot. Um, I've kept these hot in a pan, so we're gonna put those on top, our lids. I actually have changed to using four jars brand lids, F-O-R-J-A-R-S. Um, I've just had better luck with them and I've never really had terrible luck with the Masons, but I know that some people are saying that they're not uh, keeping as long, so I've been ordering four jars, and then the mason lids, that if I have to get jars that um, come with lids, I just use those for my dry goods when I'm storing them. But I've had excellent uh, luck with these. They, they've done really well, the four jars have. And they're not very expensive. I actually got them off of Amazon. So... I don't know if I put this where you could see it here, but we're just putting these lids on each jar. 
my pan of water is hot over here um, I don't want to put a you would never want to put a cold jar in a hot boiling water or take a hot jar and put it in cold boiling water because you will crack your jars so it's really important to keep your temperatures um, close to being the same. Now we're going to put a ring on here and we're just going to finger tighten it. Uh, you don't want to crank it down really hard, just you know what feels comfortable without forcing it. Because for them, in order for them to seal, the air actually is going to have to come out of the jar. So I just put them on finger tight, comfortably finger tight. Um, and so far it's worked out really well for me. But if you put them on too tight and the air is trying to get out, you'll find your lids get all dented and bent up and you won't have a good seal on your jars. All right, in order to do this, I'm going to use jar tongs and pick up the jars so that they are secure and put them on the rack in the bottom of my pan. And I don't want them to touch, but they could be very close. These smell so good. I'm wondering whoever pickled the first beet. It's not something that uh, seeing them in the garden I probably would have thought to do. So, sorry, the way my camera is right now, I have to plug it in and I have to be in front of it to grab these. Okay, so I'm going to have to process the last two separately, which is fine. Look, aren't those gorgeous? These, uh, this one actually has a lot of golden beets in it, so we'll see how that works out. Um, okay. All right, I've got all my jars in here. Um, I'm going to show you a quick look inside the pan. Then we're going to put our lid on, and we are not going to start our processing time until uh, this comes to a rolling boil. So let me show you inside the canner. Okay, inside the canner, you'll notice I have about an inch of water over the top of my jars, and we're going to wait for that to come to a rolling boil. I am going to put a lid on because it'll boil faster that way. All right, we are at a rolling boil in here, so I'm going to set my timer for 13 minutes. That's all the longer we have to process these. That's what makes the beets so easy. Now, the reason that we can water can beets is because we have vinegar in there, so the acid content is high. Um, I'm preparing some green beans to work on after this, which I have a video that shows you how to do green beans. Um, but because there's no vinegar and green beans aren't acid, we have to pressure can those. There are people who don't, but they have to process them for hours and hours, and I know some of the Amish do it that way. They can water bath can, but I don't. I pressure can. It only takes 25 minutes in the pressure canner and there is nothing more awesome than a nice jar of green beans um, in the cold winter when you want to have an easy meal. Green beans and potatoes. So anyway, we're going to wait for our 13 minutes for the beets and then we'll take those out and we'll put the other remaining two in. All right, our timer's gone off. I turned the fire off under it because it's just easier to deal with if it's not on a boil. So um, let me turn my timer off. Um, we're going to open it up and I'm going to move. I've got green beans going at the same time. So. so I forgot to put down a heavy towel on my counter, so always do that. Um, I've got so much going here that my kitchen's kind of a mess. So let's, I'm going to move you over. I'm going to put the towel out so that I don't ruin my counter space. And we'll set these out here on this. <clears throat> okay, hopefully I've got you in a better spot so you can see. Looks like everything looks good so far. And here's what we have. They're very hot. Always use your jar tongs to take them in and out so you don't have any accidents because they are very hot. <clears throat> I'm 
Make sure they're sitting level when you take them out. Those are so beautiful. They're so red. <clears throat> I think the reddest beets that I grow are the beet, uh, bull's blood. Now these are light because I didn't have as many red beets in there, but they still taste just the same. We're going to find out though. All right. Now my last two, they've been sitting out here, so I want to be sure they're still warm. Uh, they're not as warm but they are warm so I'm going to go ahead and put them in this pot and that's another reason I wanted to turn it off um, <clears throat> and I'm going to let them sit here for just a minute before I turn the fire back on under it to kind of come up to temperature slowly so these are going to sit here and cool off I will not touch these for 24 hours so uh, it, pretty soon we should hear some popping going on and that's the lid ceiling they something that um, everybody needs to know is Lids don't seal until they start to cool down. So very rarely will you ever have a lid seal in the pot. Uh, they'll seal when they're out on the counter. All right, the last two of our beets are coming out. And the good news is I've heard seven snaps. The bad news is I haven't heard one of them snap. So what would happen if you have a jar not seal is that you can either do one of two things. You can put it in the refrigerator and that'll be your next meal you eat. Um, in the case of pickled beets, they'll stay in the fridge a long time. Or you can reprocess it. Now the problem with reprocessing, which is why I don't do that, is that it's going to overcook your food and make it mushy. So I always prefer, even if it's something pressure canning that doesn't seal, I'll just, after it cools down, I'll put it in the refrigerator and that'll be my next meal. So I hope that you will try to pickle some beets. Um, thanks for joining me today on the channel. If this was helpful to you, please like, subscribe, and share. I'm gonna go on and do a bunch of green beans after a while, so it's a canning day today in the kitchen. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for visiting the channel today.